Greetings, greetings, greetings. I'm Pastor Teddy Marshall of Word Fellowship Ministries. And um, you can find out more about us at www.wordfm.net. So, here we go. There is a, a theater in Pennsylvania called Sight and Sound. And they have elaborate production, biblical productions. Um, they tell a story or account. They portray, they give adaptions of accounts in the Bible. And this weekend, they're showing um, uh, Jonah. So I watched it, and as I'm watching, I was like, oh, man, it's really cool. Okay, fine. And what stood out to me, I mean, okay, Jonah and the whale. We've heard that story. It's uh, uh, like a lot of kids' uh, stories tell about Jonah and the whale. The great fish swallowed Jonah. Uh, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh to warn him of his impending judgment against them. They were considered a pagan nation and um, it's an, an Assyrian nation. So Assyria would be Iraq for us today in that, that place uh, in the Mediterranean. <laughs> Anywho, okay, so God told him to go and, and tell, warn the people about God's impending judgment and it was supposed to call them to repent. Now Jonah wasn't feeling it. They were enemies of Israel, and there was backstory and all of this stuff between the two, you, you know, groups of people. And he was like, "No, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, -uh. <laughs> you know, okay, I can see about the destruction part because there are enemies, but I'm not feeling this other part about you saving them. Come on now." And he goes in the other way, which is how he winds up being swallowed by the fish and and um, comes to himself inside the fish, and God delivers him. Okay. That's where we start today. I'm going to start, I'm going to read Jonah chapter 3, and I'm going to start at verse 1. Okay. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then Word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? And I'm going to jump down to... Oh, and continue. Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. And I'm going to go, okay, chapter four, verse one, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. So here's the thing. Now, many have heard this story preached, have this account preached, and they talk about God's judgment. They'll preach from the perspective of obedience or, or disobedience and obedience, and even repentance, which that's what occurred. But what I saw as I watched the production for a sight and sound of this book of Jonah was leadership. 
it was interesting how here's this man of God, a prophet of God, who received a download, an impartation of a message, a word from God. And here he is. He's supposed to be a leader, right? And he's having a moment, having an attitude because of preconceived notions, predisposition and everything, history between the two nations and all of this. And he's like, not feeling it, not going, no way, no how. Uh uh. Mm uh. -uh. So swallowed by the well, and okay, fine. And he has a, like, well, I guess I better go. And he goes. But his heart was still not right. He still was like, yeah, okay, I got to do it because God told me to. And I really didn't like the, you know, being in there with fish guts. So I'm going to go anyway. And he's like, 40 days, y'all going to go. 40 days, that's it. 40 days, God's coming. All right, fine. But the people of Nineveh heard it took it as a warning and they repented. And in that, in those days they would put on sackcloth and ashes and that represented their, um, sincerity in, uh, repentance to God and, uh, and, and sobering. The King finds out about it. A leader King finds out about it. And he's just immediately, he didn't point fingers. He didn't come up with excuses. Immediately that man took off his royal robe, put on sackcloth, ashes, and he proclaimed and made it like, no, the whole nation's going to repent. Even our animals are going to repent. And perhaps God will not bring this judgment on us. So as I'm watching the production, that's really what, what stood out to me was about the leadership and the difference between the two leaders. Here's this one proclaiming and a man of God, because he did receive the word of the Lord. And here he is. And he's having a moment. He's all in his flesh, all in his feelings. And he's just like, I ain't going over there. Mm -mm. No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not going. I'm going over there. Now, read the whole book of Jonah. It's an interesting account. And then if you do that, I would like for you to, to comment about little about things that stood out to you in it. Okay? And then, okay, so he goes and he gives the warning and, and tells the people. And then the king of Nineveh finds out a leader and immediately he's like, Oh no, we're going to repent. Oh no, we're going to, uh, -uh we're going to do this. And seeking the Lord in this place of repentance that maybe this won't come against my people. And he didn't separate himself from the people and say, you all are in trouble. I'm going back up here to the castle and I'm going to sit up in here for a minute and see how it works out for you. He didn't do any of that. He got right involved and he repented. That's leadership. Now, bringing it to us, okay? What kind of leader are you? Now, we may not hold a political pos uh, position. We may not be kings and queens in, the, in, you know, in holding a natural state. We know we're God's, the, the king of kings. We're his kids, right? So we're royalty in that respect. The word tells us that. But we are, wherever God has us, if you're a believer in Christ Jesus and you're saved, you are a, re a representative of God's, okay? Wherever he has you, you represent him. That makes you a leader. You're supposed to be leading him, leading them, whatever that audience is, one, 10, 20 millions, doesn't matter. You're a leader. Heart of God, you're a leader. Except Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, salvation, you're a leader. Wherever he has us, we are to lead, point people to God. And not only in words, the, the king of Nineveh, he spoke it and he said, oh no, this is what we're going to do. I make this proclamation. But it was his actions also. He put on sackcloth and ashes just like the people did. So his actions also showed actions of a great leader. How are you leading? How, how are we going about our, our lifestyle, our daily? Will people hear us say one thing, but we're doing something else? Will they hear us... Um, Oh, and here's the other part of a good leader, your heart. It's about your heart because yes, Jonah, <laughs> you know, like in the cartoon, uh, came to himself, right? <laughs> he shook himself and he's in the, in the belly of the whale, spit out. Okay, fine. I'm telling you, read Jonah. And he, so then in chapter three, where we read for our text today, he went, the Lord told him a second time, go on over there. Like I told you, little boy. Okay. And he may be telling you, go on over there, little girl, little boy. Now, what did I tell you to do? Go do that. Repent, Lord, please forgive me. And we go do it. But not like Jonah did. He still had an attitude. He still was like, y'all gonna die 40 days. 
40 days, God's coming, he's going to wipe you out. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm, you will no know good people. He, and now, he didn't say that part to the no good people part. But anyway, he did. He went, but his heart wasn't in it, meaning his heart, the heart of God was not in it for him. He didn't have, there we go, he did not have the heart of God in doing this. He didn't want to see the people saved. He didn't want to see God come through. He didn't want to see them repent. He was just like, well, I have, I'm doing this because I have to. That's it. That's not how, that's not a good leader. That's not a leader uh, of, of uh, God's kingdom, a representative of his. We have to have compassion and love for all people. Yep, there are differences and things are going to happen in life and people are going to try to brainwash you and convince you a certain group or position or whatever is no good and they're going to, they're, their, their words may come. The words themselves may not be bad because Jonah only said what God said, say, but it was the way he said it. That's going to happen. But how we handle it as leaders of the kingdom of God, ambassadors in the earth, we have to have the right heart about it. So we say what God says to say, but we have to say it with the love of God. We have to say it with his heart. Now, that doesn't mean we're all fluffy and, you know, and, and, you know, uh, avoiding reality, not that, but we have, we have to present God's message. We have to do as he says, obey. Yes. We, we're, we're doing all of that with the heart of God, meaning Lord, I want them to be saved. Lord, I want them to get it. Cause I want to see them grow. I want to see them get beyond whatever this is. I want to see them delivered of those addictions. I want to see them set free from those things that are hindering them in their lives. I want to see them living and growing in you. That's why I do what I do. That's why I want to say what God is telling me to say. And another part to this, or I'm going to take a little sidestep here, is that when you there is an enemy and they're out there, okay? And it could be one, it could be a group, whatever. And let's say they don't repent and they don't come into what God is calling them to and his judgment comes. A leader, God's leader is not going to be happy about it. Your flesh may press you to try to say, that's what you get coming against me and my family or whatever, trying to shut me down or whatever. That's what you get. We can't have that attitude either. And the word even tells us don't go there. We still with the heart, those who are intimate with God will still feel some type of, um, compassion for them in terms of, man, I really, I really didn't want to see that happen to them. I didn't want to see them suffer. I didn't want them to feel like I feel. I don't want them to, anyone to ever feel as badly as they made me feel. I don't want to, that's the heart of a good leader, a, a real leader. Now it doesn't mean, like I said before, that we're all, everything's all fluffy and peachy keen and all of that. No. And there are times that God, there is tough love. Where God is going to say, okay, that's it. It's a wrap. Cut it off. That's it. Um, come or separate yourself from them or whatever. It's all about following the Lord's instruction, but following with his heart. Look at Jesus hanging from the cross. Look at Stephen um, who was stoned. Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. Those are leaders. That's a real leader. So how are you leading? Check yourself, check your heart, go to God. Father, search my heart and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Help me have the right heart as I go about doing what you call me to do. Lord, help me because I'm not really feeling this, but I, I, I know I have to do this and I want to please you. Help me in this Holy Spirit. Help me not miss a thing. Help me to see the people or the situation or whatever it is. Help me to see it from your vantage point. Help me to see it with your eyes from your heart, God. This is a leader. So wherever you are, in the home, in the school, in, in the workplace, in the store, in the highways, in the byways, <laughs> old school, wherever you are, you're a leader. If you love God and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are a leader. Let's do it God's way. Let's, and, and leaders have to repent too. Remember the king of Nineveh, we have our moments. We ask God to forgive us. Dust yourself off. Holy Spirit, help me get past this. And we go about God's business with his heart. Now let's go be about his business and do true leadership with the heart of God. 
That's all I have for you today. Praise God. And like, subscribe, comment. Yes, comment. Read the book of Nineveh and send me comments and, and share what you saw when you read the book of Jonah. All right? Cool beans. Love you all. Be blessed. Ah. Lead with the love of the Lord. Praise God. That's all I got. Bye-bye.